Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So I have the rear end with me out of the $100 project golf cart. Now I previously cracked the case open and checked those bearings inside the case to make sure they spun fine, didn't have any noise or anything like that. Put the case back together. I gave the case a paint job. I taped it off. I painted the axle tubes as well. Now, before I install the brakes on this right here, I went ahead and pulled the axles out of this rear end here. The axle bearing had some rust on it and I'd had a project golf cart in the past before and it had a rusty bearing in it as well. After, you know, you found out you were going around a corner and it starts whining on you and screaming really loud. So I knew it was time, let's just go ahead and replace those bearings. So on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I replace the bearings. In one of these axles, it's pretty easy. There's a few, few tools that you need, a shock press. But other than that, I use a lot of just random tools, like right here, that I'll link down in the description below, and I'll link all the parts to the bearings and the collar and the C-clips and all that as well in the description below also. So in today's video, that's what we're gonna be doing. So let's jump into it. remove the axle here is to actually remove the snap ring and you can see that little circle down inside that hole actually there's two circles in there we're going to take some right angle snap ring pliers we're going to pull that out in order to pull this axle out of the housing now i'm going to be using a snap ring plier here this is a right angle and I made sure to put the smallest size tips in there as well. The next thing we're going to use to help us is a small flathead screwdriver here. Let me tell you the purpose of this right here that I found helpful. On the front of the axle flange here, you have a hole. It's a hole sticking through there, right? What I like to do is once I have my snap ring pliers onto the snap ring, and the snap ring compressed, I like to take the small flat head to help the snap ring exit the housing, or I like to you know help it extract it from the housing, if that makes sense. All right, well, I was able to get the snap ring out of the axle housing, and as you can see right here, the snap ring right there, And uh, this is the axle. Okay, so inside of the axle housing here, there's a lip back here. You can barely see it with my fingers touching. Right before that lip, you have an axle seal. So I went ahead and I removed the axle seal. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that as well. Now, they have seal removal tools but I don't have one. I used to have one, I guess it grew legs and walked away. So I'm having to improvise. So let me show you exactly what I did to remove the axle seal from inside of the housing. I just took a flat head, or in my case, a steel uh, chainsaw weed eater tool. I stuck the flat head inside of the seal, not in front of that little, that little uh, catch right there or that little metal slit inside the axle but just onto the seal. And I used the leverage against the outside of the pipe here. And I actually hit this outside portion here with my hand. So basically I held it in place. I hit as hard as I could and the axle seal popped out. Now it took me three tries to do it, but I was able to remove that without an axle seal puller. So that's exactly how it came out. And that's how it goes back into it. There it is, the new oil seal is in place. If we put the, the pliers onto it, we have to open it up to stretch it out. Think about just taking this flat head, putting it down in here. We need another flat head to uh, help it get over the ridge there. Try to get a good shot for you guys in keep it from 
pulling back in at the same time. There it goes. You got that up. We're gonna slide that off as well. We're gonna hold on to this. All right, so what I'm gonna do in order to remove the bearing here from the axle, I'm gonna take a cutoff wheel and a grinder and cut it at an angle, and then try to pop it with a flathead screwdriver. We're gonna to try to go enough that we can remove the bearing without damaging the axle itself. Okay, so I have the upper portion of the bearing off and I have the middle portion off. This is the lower portion of the bearing and this is a collar now. So on this collar here, I just took the side grinder. I actually cut a slit into it. Cut a slit in that, I cut a slit in the other thing too. This is the lower portion of the bearing. We didn't have to press it off, we just cut it off. All right guys, so in order to reassemble the axle shaft back into the housing, the first thing we need to put on is the C-clip. This is the C-clip here that goes into the axle tube. It's the outermost C-clip here. And you wanna put that on first since it goes all the way down to the outside um, of the flange or closer to the outside of the flange. So we're gonna go that on first like that. Now, this is the bearing that we're gonna be sticking on the axle. And as you can tell, the bearing goes on so far, so we need to press this on here. If you have a press, you're gonna need something to put something on here to this inner race here to press it down onto the axle shaft. This is pretty much what I have found out. This is an edger blade, and the edger blade fits directly over the shaft with not much room to spare. You see that? very tight fit. So we're gonna put this right here into the press and press this bearing into place. So I have my lower plate on the second notch here of my 20 ton hydraulic Harbor Freight bottle jack. I have my plates I'm using. I'm using this section here of this plate and of this plate. I'm just gonna put those together. That should give the ball bearing and this blade here, this edger blade, as much support as possible. I have this two inch block or this two inch piece of metal here. We're gonna put up in here. What it's gonna do is take up some space between the jack here and the axle. Only thing I did was just move this, uh, this C-clip out of the way. But as you can tell, it is going in. Looks like it has fully seated here. So this is the collar or bushing. I'll put links to this and everything else in the description below, but this goes on after the bearing goes on. Uh, get it real close in place, but the next thing we need to do is repeat the same process again, put it in the uh, shop press here and press the, the bushing or the collar down beside the bearing. Now we have the axle. We have our main C-clip that fits into the axle shaft. We have our bearing. We have our collar. The last piece is this small C-clip here. But this C-clip, there's a groove inside the axle that it goes and holds the bearing and the collar into place. Now we're taking a flathead screwdriver and sticking it into some of the side slots of it. 
and popping it down. Like so. So as you can tell there, we have our main C-clip, we have our new bearing, we have our new collar, and we have the other C-clip that is now in place. And you can see the C-clip itself is actually in the groove, but there are some spots there that you can get like a flat head to it to help remove. Everything is now fully installed. Now we just need to slip it back into the axle. Now when you're reinstalling it, these splines need to fit into the splines inside the housing. Don't just go jamming it back in there. Slowly put it in. Take your time. It just fell into place there. The axle's back in. The next thing we need to do, I'm gonna take the air hammer and I'm going to uh, push it in from the axle side here. That's gonna seat the bearing and everything inside the axle as well so we can get this last C-clip in place. It's back into place. So next thing we need to do is go ahead and take our tool, compress our C-clip here together. And once we do that, uh, we can place it back into the actual, into the groove. You might have to look through the little hole and take a flathead screwdriver to help the C-clip fit into place if you need to. Release it from the tool and now you're done. Now one last thing that I like to do is to just take a flathead, stick it through the hub hole here and press against that C-clip just to make sure that it's seated properly. I usually go all around with it, stopping every quarter inch or half inch or so. The C-clip is what holds the axle into place. So if, if the C-clip is not fully seated and you install the axle, you go around the curve, you could possibly have the axle slide out of the, uh, out of the housing and you don't want that. That'll be a safety issue. You know, take your time, double check it, triple check it, whatever you have to do to, uh, to make, that, make sure that C-clip is installed properly. All right guys, so we're done. And uh, it was a pretty simple process. Just be sure that you have all the tools there to, uh, to do everything with. You have all the parts to do everything with. I did not have the collars and I had to order the collars halfway during this video. So this video took a couple of days to make. That's a very simple process to replace the bearings and to replace the collar. And I just reused the C-clips that was in there already. Um, so with that being said, I'm not gonna have to worry about this right here, axle screaming when I'm going around curves and uh, such. So I'm glad I was able to knock that part out of the build. So anyways, guys, I appreciate it and we'll see y'all later.